chapter. Yes. Amen. Yes. Maria. Yes. Maria. Yes. I was glad. Yes. I was glad. Yes. It's Sunday. Yes. Amen. When they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Asaph said, the psalmist, because when I get there, my mind, my mind, my mind was messing with me. My, my body was messing with me. And I was fighting on the outside, but Asaph said, when I get there, Because when you get there, yes, sir. Yes. Headaches go away. You feel bad? Yes. Mark chapter 4. I owe y'all some time. I preach. Fuzzy, you should have been. I preach too long. I ain't have you ain't have to say, I ain't have no real. I have no real. And everybody tell me, preach. I preach about it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I get excited because I love y'all. I love y'all. I get excited about the word. But I owe y'all some time. Amen. I don't know if y'all will get it back today, but I can say it. As long as I owe you. <laughs> but I owe you. I mean, not let you get it. I owe you. I don't know if you're going to get it back today, but I owe you. Mark 4 and um, 35. Mark 4 and 35. Thank you, Media Master. We want to take it down to verse 41. It's a familiar passage. Um, and two points. See, Maria, that's what messed me up. I, I got fans and I tried to do three points last week. And sure enough, that third one took me over. But hey, I'm back. I'm back with two points.
carest thou not mm -hmm. that we perish. Mm -hmm. And I mean, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Mm -hmm. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, peace, be still. Yes. 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 Then the wind died down, and he was, and it was completely calm. Imagine that, right? Just from this strong, mighty, hurricane type size wind, Jesus says, Peace, be still. And then the wind dies down and it's completely calm. Yeah. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Yeah. Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? <laughs> what? Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Who is this? Um, that's of the many affirmations that I keep around um, the house, um, on the desk that I may study from. This is one that I have, I put, you know, who is this? It reminds me, Sister Nero, that, it, you know, Jesus can calm the storm, yeah, right? right? It's just a reminder, it's just an affirmation for me that what I am dealing with here, he has it, he has it. But <clears throat> I want to bring a message today on the title, uh, Carest Thou Not. All right. Carest Thou Not. The disciples asked the question in the NIV version, don't you care if we drown? Don't you care? Um, the emphasis, obviously, here today is questioning God and don't you see what I'm going through? You know, did you nail that? See, you know, the Bible says Jesus as he was asleep, right? And the disciples are obviously fighting for their lives, right? When the Bible says the boat was almost was it, it was drowned in the water, the waves was beating over against the boat. So, so you know, you can see the buckets, right, of them trying to get the water out to keep the boat afloat. And where is Jesus? I'm going through all of this, and then they say it was your idea. <laughs> Wasn't it you that said, "Come on, but come on, guys." Let's go to the other side. And they say, come on, Jesus, get in the boat. Yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't Jesus' boat, right? It, it was the disciples. They were fishermen. And as they have now been commissioned on this evangelistic journey to spread the word, to be Jesus' disciples, Jesus said, okay, yeah. earlier in the verse, he had finished at one region. He said, okay, I'm ready to go to the next. Let's go to the other side. They get in the boat. We're doing I, I am where you place me, doing what you would have me to do, and now I'm fighting. Sounds familiar? Kind of? You don't want to admit it in church in front of everybody? It's it's not right. Amen. Right. <laughs> but the idea in the title, as I move quickly and pick up my voice and we'll get through this, carry it down not. Is the emphasis of this message? You know, there are many sermons here, but it's the emphasis of this text because it is what the disciples ask in this moment and as in this introduction, as we get us all to relate. It's the entanglement. It is. It is really the essence of what I think divides many of us from church to not church, because we think God is asleep. When we're in trouble. Yeah. I said, you got to worry. Right? right? When I need him. God, I needed you. Yeah. Yeah. Where were you? Right? God, you saw you saw what they were doing to me on this job. And I prayed. And you didn't show up. And so you, you because. And so folk began to question the very existence of God. Because God did not conform when they said come. You know, Pastor Allen, you, I've always said this from my youth, before I was even a minister, I always had a problem when I heard folks say, I need a rat now blessing. Right? Yeah. right? 
right? I know y'all heard it, right? As if you got to tell God it's so urgent. Right. Maybe you don't know, but <laughs> you, you can answer prayer, but obviously you don't know how urgent it is. And so it, it, it is really an indictment on my faith that if I feel I need to tell God when he needs to show up by, and so I put God on the clock and say, God, you got to come right now. I know you hear my prayer. Well, not saying that to me. I'm hearing it like this way. If I can hear you pray, and if I can answer your prayer, don't you know I know when to show up? Yes. Come on. But yet, folk turn around and say to Jesus, "Carest thou not?" Listen, not that we drown. Can't, don't you care? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it, you know, don't we have those thoughts and questions towards God when we look at our lives and then, oh yes, when we look at the neighbor? Oh, and the neighbor, the neighbor is doing all right. The neighbor seems to be doing good, and here I am. What do we say? I'm a good person. Right? I'm good, and here I am in a storm, shoveling water out of the boat just to stay alive. Don't you get tired of treading water? You can't get your business. Don't you get tired of that? Don't you just like, oh, yes. Yes. Okay. oh give me a <laughs> What do they call it? A life jacket. We need something. We need something to help me float. I'm, you know, we, I'm, yeah, I'm doing all right, but I'm kicking, you know? Right, right. I'm just surviving again. And, and, and they're saying, no, you know, well, where are you now? The question that I have, fam, while I bring up this introduction, the disciples asked it, but I'm very concerned about how this dilemma of when in this instance, I'm sure this is what God is a it is a message for us all. He's asleep, right? And it gives the impression this God thing. You know, you hear that before, right? This God thing. Is it is it working? Does it work? And you know, folk, when you get when you feel like something isn't working, it, it just you just get turned. That's one of Pastor Allen's biggest problems with the church. I want to make sure everything I say it is, it is, it is not only intelligible, but it puts you in a place that you can put it to work and see it work, right? Because we can understand the frustrations of what these disciples must have been feeling. Carrots that are not. And then for us and for others that we may know that may be in a situation, and now they're questioning God. Right? And it's very existence. And they look at us, right? Y'all still going to church. Y'all see y'all get so excited. Y'all, why y'all so emotional, right? They can't understand it. Right? But there's something that registered in us that, that in spite of the storm, despite of the storm, uh, we're okay, but yet when someone else is struggling with that idea, you know, it, it allows us, it pushes us to, to bring about a message like this as a pastor. You know, that we can all relate to. Pastor Allen has been there. You know, God, don't you care? Even if we say, God, I know you're there, but do you care? You know, so even if we can move up from the idea that, okay, I know you exist, why do you leave me? Us? Why my family? Why my house? Mm -hmm. Amen. We act, and then, and you know, and then, you know, what really gets you, Charlene, is when you're saying, hey, I go to church. Mm -hmm. You know, I serve. Mm -hmm. And it brings us to the reality of where we are now. And if we're asking questions, it's my job as a pastor to bring out these two points of a message like this that allow us to grow from it and to not just relate, but to grow into um, take in knowledge and share it with others. So as we may question God, let's go through these two points. That's my introduction. It is the entanglement. That entanglement can cause some to not even believe in God. And even for those of us that say, God, I know you exist, we may get to a place where we say this church stuff. Right? Because I was in a storm and everything just went bad. Right? God wasn't there. Okay. Let's go over number one. Number one, ready media ministry. Storms come to everybody. Yes. I know it's familiar, but I'm gonna work on this one for a minute, Vanessa. The problem with it that we must understand in these two points, watch this, Alfonso. Jesus was on board. Mm -hmm. 
I was doing Jesus' will. Yeah. And a storm still came, called it. Right, yeah. So I can only deduce from this, Javon, it doesn't matter who you are in life, yeah. no one. Yeah. Well, no. I think you're going to love this the most. It's impervious to the storm. We want perfect job, perfect house, perfect body, perfect marriage, come on, say it right, perfect money, never broke, never sad, always thriving, always good. We all want it, but I'm going to tell you, no one has a perfect life. Amen. Amen. Y'all hear that? That's good news. That's good news. You know what? That's like, I can breathe, because I thought it was just me. But it's me and you. Because no one has a perfect life. None of us are impervious to the storm, even when Jesus is on board, even when you're doing the will of Jesus, even when you're telling dying men and women about a Savior that can save their soul, bless their lives, and do all of that and the rest, even when you're doing God's will, you're not impervious to the storm. The storm's coming to everybody. Everybody goes through a storm sometimes in your life. I love, I love that. That tells me number one, grow up. Grow up, storms come. And hide behind this idea that I can eat tides on Sunday, so I shouldn't be in anything. Hey, what, what, Maria, what Pastor Allen said Wednesday? This ain't heaven. Exactly. This ain't heaven. I fight with demons and devils on this side. I was supposed to get to a place in my Christianity, right? In my relationship with God, I'm supposed to be holy enough, righteous enough, and speaking the word of faith that nothing was ever supposed to go wrong. That's not the case. Well, I mean, storms come. And they come to everyone. So before you say, why me? You might as well say, why us? Right. <laughs> yeah, and oh, you don't see Pastor Allen? That's because I'm good at not showing everybody my business. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> you got to teach your own. Y'all think I be smiling like this all the time? Come on, Pastor. That's just for the camera, y'all. <laughs> That's just for the camera, y'all. That's just for y'all sake. Y'all got to see Pastor. Yeah, Jew, Jubilee and Jubilee and all the time. That's what y'all got to see. But that ain't me. All the time. Hey, Sister Allen, say amen. amen. Well, I know I'm putting on a face for y'all. Y'all know I put on a face on that job, man. Right. I put on a face for y'all, but that's how they go through storms. I mean, it's just like the rest. Okay. And I learned one of my greatest consolations is it happens. Yeah. So even when I read this text and I see storms come, I don't know since me sitting looking at something and finding something wrong and then telling God, God said, oh, so you found a problem. Everyone has it. <laughs> and if you're trying to make life perfect, try, uh, tr listen, just let the pastor preach. Just let the pastor preach. It's not, it's not going to be perfect here. Amen. That's the whole point. It's not going to be perfect here. So you know what you do? You work for good. You work for the good life. Come on, pastor. You work for you work for let me tell you something here. You know what you do? You just say, I'm good with this. Because if you're good, if you're trying to say, I want to make it perfect, that's where hearts get broken. Because you look at the magazines and you'll swear everybody in there happy and everybody got the perfect marriage and everybody, ooh, they've been so cute and they go, ooh, they got money. They got a house. I got a house like that. Y'all ain't in that house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you might have pretty houses and pretty babies. And come on, come on, come on, come on. People have, you know, you know, folk had the best jobs. Jobs you wish you could have. And they feel so attractive, and they'll find something wrong. No perfect job. No perfect life. So, fam, what Pastor Allen does is I stop striving for perfection here. Right? But my joy is something that comes from the fact that I look at it and say, oh, that's good. 
Y'all see what I say? I look at it and say, that's good. I don't look to find something wrong because I, I keep looking. Look at the mirror, Lord. I know. I know you look good from a distance. Yeah. I know you look good. Take that make up off. Take, take, you know. But, but and from a distance, you know, maybe you get a post. Don't you know? Y'all never get in the mirror and look long enough. Some of you don't have to look long enough, right? You'll find something. Yeah, see, right? Is where they come from, right? Because there is no perfection. Right? That is the way. So I learned. I'm good with where I am. Thank God for this job. Thank God for my honey. Thank God for my marriage. Thank God for these children. Yeah. Oh, right? Thank God for these children. Thank God. Trying to make your spouse perfect, heartbroken. Trying to make that job perfect with people. Wait, wait, do you work with people? <laughs> if you work with people, you might as well stop now. Because if anybody else has anything else to do with it in your life, the chances are. Up. So we've learned storms come. The lesson here, Glenn, is Jesus was on board. And they were not pervious. And it wasn't a small storm. It was a raging storm. So much so that they thought their lives were in jeopardy. My God. You see that, fam? And we, we go crazy over a bill. <laughs> right? And look at this. So they go to wake Jesus up. And they ask him. They don't say, Jesus, get up, face the storm. They don't say, Jesus, do your do your things. Yeah. You know, they don't speak to Jesus with that confidence, right? They, they're, they're in a complete panic, as we can relate. Let's tell it right. I've been there. I've been there. Get in a complete panic because you, spread, you know, for those of us that have hair, if you have hair, you put it in your head and you say, Lord, what's wrong? I come, I can't get it right. And everyone's saying, and then you look at and you go to God and they ask God, don't you care? It's not a, think about the question they posed to Jesus. Don't you care? As if this is your fault. If you love me more, I would be in this. You love someone else more than me, so you're allowing this to happen to me, and you loving someone else more. Don't you care? Look at, think about the question. It goes to the heart and questions his existence and his power. Just like raising that one question, don't you care? Maybe it was one, maybe they all was thinking it, was afraid to ask. But it's like, why would you allow me to go through this? So they wake him up. And Jesus the whole time asleep. He wasn't worried about the storm. He sleep. And it says in the text, he got up. Rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. The wind died, it was completely calm. Verse 40. Here comes, point two. And he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? And the second question, my man, gives us the point. He said, He said, Do you still? Coffin is right there. Do you still? Have no faith. Media ministry point two is how you respond oh, to the storm. Come on. Point two is how you respond to the storm. Storms come to everybody. Point one. Far. The answer really is it's how you, not God, not It's you. And he says to them, he says, he says, two questions. He says, why are you so afraid? Number one. Now you know what this means, right, Bob? If, God, if Jesus is saying, why are you so afraid? You, you know what the book says, Lamar? God says, I want to allow no more to come on you than you can bear. Come on. Dickie Johnson, if that's in the book, help me say amen. amen. It's in the book. So God said, I already know what you can help. Yes. But Pastor, God already knows what Pastor. God already knows what you can help. And if it's too much, God knows how to step in yes. and bring you out of it. But Pastor, you don't know how the heart, how the heart is going. You don't know what this is. God said, if it's too much, I gotta know. I gotta know power. I gotta know love. I storm's hurt. But if it's 
I'm in the book. He said, he said, so if he said, why are you so afraid? You know what that tells me? I shouldn't have been. Yeah. Right. Right. See, it's how you respond to the storm. Yeah, the storms come. It, it's not just your house. It's everyone's house. You know what Pastor was saying? So the disciples in the boat with Jesus, storms came. Storms come to everyone. And when they come, it's how you respond. Now, Pastor Allen, if are you gonna sit down and preach the word, and then let a storm come, and then get all in your heart, and, and now how you gonna preach? How, how you gonna encourage someone else? It's how you respond to the storm. Storms come, and he first question he asks, "Why are you so afraid?" King, I'm looking right at you. Why are you so afraid? But, <laughs> It's hard. Why are you so afraid? Now, it would be, it'd be one thing if I'm speaking to you on human terms. These are words written in red. So that tells me I have a responsibility, Jay, when the storms come. No fear. That's hard. Easier said than done, I know. But it is his expectation. Not for me to question him of why the storm came. But it's my responsibility to not be afraid. And notice the second question. He said, do you still? Fuzzy, I'm ready to close it out now. He said, do you still? Did. After all that we did through? Okay. Okay, come on, you got it, you got it, right? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do y'all remember the prayers? And you say, God, if you just get me out of this, and the Lord showed up, Y'all ain't never said that in y'all house. Yeah. You tell me you're not so hurt, 
Summer. You're doing all that shit on that. Come on, come on. Let me just say it in a cultural sense, right? Cultural sense so I can bring it home. You're doing all that shit on that. You ain't nothing. I ain't never did. I ain't never did. I'm in the cultural sense. I know, I know. You behave as if I have never done anything for you. I know, but listen, in the cultural sense, you acting like. With a cake. You acting like. You acting like. I ain't never did. Yeah. Nothing for you? How do you feel? Now, friends, even if I messed up, you act like. So I don't want God to turn around and say, son, I expect you better. Because you know, you know. You know, you know, you ain't, you know you ain't that small. You can have the folks fool. But you know, son, if I didn't step in your life. So because of that, family, <coughs> I don't need any question to God. Kill something. Amen. God bless you. Amen. You want songs, God? It's how you respond to the storm. Yeah. Amen. You hear that? Yeah. Storms come up. Yeah. But it's how you respond. Yeah. Huh? How am I going to respond? No fear. No sense. That's not going to help me. Going to God in a pen. And when all I have to do is remember, God, if you did it before, I know. That's cliche. It ain't, it ain't just cliche. That's some truth. If you did it before, I have no choice. Trust you're going to do it again. Amen. God bless your family. Let us stand for prayer. Amen. I love that. God be glory. Take that moment. Amen. Does he care for me? He loves me. He loves me. Amen. Yes. He loves me. He loves me. Amen. Yes. Jesus loves me. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for the power of your word. Father, we're praying and asking. Lord, bless those that are here to receive it in Jesus' name. And Father, as a prayer over this church, as a prayer over this body of believers that are assembled, that are listening online, Father, we come before you in prayer. As you have taught us that in this life you shall have trouble. But you've also said, be of good cheer, you have already overcome. Father, I'm praying for us together. Not just as your servants, but as your children. We come to you, Father, looking to you to bless us in that way because, Lord, unless you do it, it can't get done. Unless you bless us, Father, it won't happen. Unless you open the door, Father God, no blessings come forward. Because we know it, God, does it bring us prayer? Father, I'm coming in and asking in the name of Jesus that for those of us, Father, that are assembled, get this prayer. Father, pray and asking in the name of Jesus that whatever it is we're facing, whatever storms of life that may be coming our way, Father, we're asking that you deliver us through. As we come before you, Lord, trust and believe. As we come before knowing that you can set us we pray we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that by your power and your love, that you do it again, Father. Whether that is healing of our body, mind, and your spirit, whether that's financial blessings, blessings in our home, or blessings in our places of employment, we ask, Father, that you do it for us. Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Amen.